and let's just see if this works. So we run our code, and we can see that our simple sequencer is running. Again, that's because it's a sub-VI here of our remote control VI. Okay, so let's load a sequence file and press the load sequence button. Hmm, very interesting. So we can see it loaded the sequence. We have this LED here that says the sequence was loaded. And we also can see what that sequence is, what all the steps are. Now let's try to run the sequence. Just move that down here so we can see. Let's run. Okay, the sequence is running. See it's on the second step. Five second dwell time. Now it's on the third step. And it's done. Fantastic. And so finally here, if we exit from our remote control, we see that it also exited the sequencer, just as we thought it would. So there you go. We've added remote control capability through a user event based API to allow our simple sequencer to receive inbound messages from another state machine. This is a very powerful design pattern that you can use in your applications. Let's review what we just learned in this lesson. We learned how to configure a JKI state machine to receive and handle dynamic user events coming from outside of the JKI state machine. We called this inbound messaging. We saw how to create an API to our simple sequencer JKI state machine so that we could load, run, and abort a sequence from that remote VI. The steps we followed to do this were creating some dynamic user events for our API that would allow us to load, run, and abort the sequence. We then subscribed or registered our simple sequencer JKI state machine to receive and handle those events. And then finally, in our remote control VI, we generated the user events to achieve remote control of the simple sequencer. Coming up next, we'll see how we can establish bi-directional communication and respond to inbound messages by sending outbound messages also with user events.